Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning, the fourth Sunday in the season of creation. It is so wonderful to have you joining us for worship this morning and what's going to be a very uh, special worship service as we celebrate the baptism of Clara and Joseph Pantalone right here. Let everyone give a round of sound at home and welcome, every, and welcome uh, their family to worship with us this morning. It really works out really well uh, that we're doing a baptism today and talking about the healing power of water um, as Pastor Jonathan preaches uh, from Lake Michigan, actually, right near his, his family home in Lake Michigan, near Lake Michigan. With that said, let's begin with our welcoming comments and opening sentences. We gather in the image of the Creator who is a community of love. We gather in the name of the Redeemer who reconciles all of creation. We gather in the presence of the life giver who inspires new life and renews it. And friends, in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith and the will of God. And at this time, I'd ask you to present the little ones for baptism. We present Clara Valentina Pantalone and Joseph Oakley Pantalone for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your children baptized into Christ? If so, give a vigorous, we do. We do. And as you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say we do. We, we do. do. And spouse. Well, no, another question for y'all. <laughs> Do y'all promise to nurture Clara and Joseph in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, say, we do. We do. And people of God, folks back at home too, do you promise to support Clara and Joseph and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, give a vigorous, we do. We do. Therefore, friends, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, we renounce them. We, we renounce them. them. And joining together, I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having confessed our faith, we give thanks for the gift of baptism. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks and praise. Jordan, do you want to pour the water in? I mean, you are named after the river after all. <laughs> yes. 
Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. You are the fire of rebirth. You poured out your spirit on your people, Israel. You breathed life into our dry bones. Your son, Jesus, promised to send the spirit to us that the world may know your peace and truth. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Breathe new life into those who are here baptized. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It's baptism time. <laughs> Clara. Just in time for <laughs> Perfect. Clara, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. I'm sorry, I don't mean to wake you up. And the Holy Spirit. Hey, Joseph. How's it going, broski? <laughs> Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. I know I don't want to mess up your hair. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. Good job. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Clara and Joseph with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Clara, <laughs> child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And Joseph, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Okay. And I'm going to hand these to sponsors. Usually we would light those some of the Christ candle, but you know, wind and outsideness. But may you light your Claire and Joseph, may your light so shine before others that they may see your good, good and may they, they see God's good works and glorify the Father in heaven. And friends, together, let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Congratulations, friends, you are baptized! Yay! Let me say, by the way, everyone at home watching, please make some comments of congratulation here on Facebook, because I'm sure that, uh, that, uh, that Amanda and Justin are going to be watching later. Let me also say that especially during such difficult times, these moments of good news, these moments of new life are incredibly powerful and incredibly important and incredibly meaningful for so many. And so I'm so thankful for you all uh, being here with us today, working through kind of a atypical way of doing a baptism. And But despite everything going on, new life in the waters of baptism still happens. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
grace of Jesus Christ our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. As we gather this baptismal morning, friends, as we celebrate new life in the waters of baptism, let us say the prayer of the day. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties. You know our failings. Give us Your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us. And guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on heads. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is the only person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit inequity, they shall die for it. For the inequity 
that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when, do, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had been committed. They shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of the Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me. And get yourselves a new heart. Get yourselves a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. Listen for a word from God. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. So what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Will you pray with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes in two somewhat seemingly disjointed parts first half, an engagement between Jesus and the elders, comes to a head after which Jesus had just cleared the temple a few verses prior. The second half, a short parable about two sons, in which Jesus asks somewhat of a rhetorical question. Now, the issues at play seem to be related to the questions of Jesus's moral authority. Just a few verses prior, we read that Jesus had gone on one of history's most infamous temper tantrums, the story of a temple cleansing that often is cited as one of the reasons that Jesus also was angry. And after this blowout, the teachers of the law and the elders want to know who gave Jesus the right to occupy the temple 
in the way that he was, to do what he did. And so Jesus, possibly channeling Socrates, engages in some Socratic questioning before finally declaring that the outcasts of the day, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, had more righteousness than the elders. And thus ends the reading. So the question for us is, what does this story have to tell us today? Why does this matter? Well, I believe that in a world that struggles to find any sort of moral authority, or even wonders if there is, in fact, a singular moral authority, the idea that a man from Nazareth over 2,000 years ago could, in fact, have any sort of authority on our lives today might be a bit of a weak argument, at least to the outsider. And in fact, we don't have to look far. Look at our hyper-individualistic society that we live in today. The idea that anyone could have authority over anyone else is often met with scoffing and grumbling. Don't believe me? Just think about how you felt when somebody told you that you had to wear a mask or refrain from gathering. But understanding the way that Jesus turns this question of authority on its head is of utmost importance for us today. Looking to trap Jesus in a question, the elders ask what might be a pointed question, but one that might make a lot of sense. By whose authority? In the midst of what was perceived to be chaos that Jesus just incited, the elders ask a rhetorical question with just a hint of sarcasm. Jesus, who gave you the right who gave you the authority to upend the ways in which that we do things? Who gave you the right? You think you're trying to get a message across? Who gave you the right to do this? Who gave you the right to riot and protest? Who gave you the right to upend our tables, to destroy our property? You don't like what you see? Well, you don't have to destroy property to get your point across. And Jesus responds in kind, I will tell you by whose authority, if you can answer just one question. Where does John's baptism come from? The beauty in Jesus' response that either way, the elders cannot win. For if they say that John's teaching is from heaven, that is, it is divine moral authority, then Jesus can respond by saying that by not following John's calls to repentance, the elders have lost any right to say what is right and wrong. But if the elders say that the teachings of John were not from heaven, then they have to answer to the crowds. The crowds who viewed John as having moral authority as a prophet. In other words, Jesus' reply reveals that no matter the answer, the elders must acknowledge that they failed to live up to the moral authority that John brought, whether or not it came from heaven. Either the teaching came from God, or it was perceived by the people as coming from God. And what was this teaching? It was a call to repentance, to repenting of broken systems, systems of injustice that the elders had perpetuated. Now, what does this look like for us today? I wonder how long have our systems of leadership, those in power, I wonder how long we have put up with sitting by, by not addressing the moral injustice of our society. I wonder how long we have sat by while people on the margins have struggled. I wonder how long we have sat by as a ruling class continues to perpetuate injustice and turns a blind eye to those who are suffering. In the second half of our passage, Jesus makes clear that those who previously did not do what was right but later repented were in fact following the moral imperative. But the elders, rather than see those tax collectors and prostitutes as ever possibly doing what was right, continued to wield their power and privilege over those who did not have. Jesus makes clear that repentance 
is the act of turning away from what was unjust. That's the real message here. And from there, we can draw the conclusion that Jesus, in the face of unrepentance by the elders, saw that tearing down an unjust system in the temple was the only other option. Now, sure, this can seem drastic, but we don't have to look far to see where this is breaking through today. We hear the cries from those on the margins Black lives, LGBTQ lives, immigrant lives, people who are poor, people who are suffering, people who are sick, people who are tired of broken systems that continue to perpetuate suffering and injustice, all while the supposed elders of our society, which include pastors, religious leaders, and teachers, sit by and bask in the power and the privilege that they have. As Christ followers, for us to heed this message is to question the authority and the privilege that we have been given and ask, do we join Jesus in tearing down that which is broken, that which does not serve every person that is created in the image of God? And so perhaps when you step out and raise your voice in protest and lament. Perhaps when you join a call for moral justice and someone asks you, where is your authority? You can answer the way that Jesus did and ask, this authority either comes from heaven or it does not. But the real question is, if it comes from heaven and you do not abide by it, why have you not heeded the call to repentance? But if it does not, and yet society hears the voice of those on the margins as prophetic, perhaps we also need to consider that our understanding of who God is is perhaps too small, and that perhaps the voices of those on the margin hear God in a way that we might not be able to. So perhaps even if we say that those on the margins do not speak for moral authority, we have to ask ourselves, is it perhaps the fact that we are just not hearing it properly? Friends, our call to action in this moment is to listen to those on the margins, to see the tearing down of broken systems. And in the face of those who ask us by whose authority we can answer, our authority comes from one greater than here. Our authority is that of Jesus Christ who calls his followers to turn away from broken systems, to heed the calls of justice, to walk humbly with God. Friends, by whose authority? It's by God's authority that we tear down these systems of injustice, that we seek the good of those was and is and is to come. Amen.
goodness. Um, just what a powerful sermon. Thank you so much, Pastor Jonathan, as well as for your beautiful, beautiful music today. Also, by the way, very impressive to run all the way from Michigan back here to the Messiah Lutheran Church in about two seconds' time. It turns out Pastor Jonathan is the Flash. That said, friends, let us ask, uh, we ask that you lift up prayers of your, in, in, the comments, uh, in the comment section on Facebook or in your hearts at this time. And we certainly have a lot of things we are praying for about. It's been a very difficult week in the life of our congregation. Rosemary is lifting up prayers for healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bill, yes, absolutely lifts up prayers for Barb Sammeyer, who continues uh, in Ellis Hospital uh, this day. Lord, in your mercy, or hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Betsy lifts up prayers for her friend and neighbor Donna, who was, in, was injured in an automobile accident this past week. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Cheryl lifts up prayers for her boss who is, in, who is fighting against cancer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Michael lifts up prayers for his therapy dog, Lily, and all the therapy dogs who can start, so they can start visiting nursing homes and hospitals again soon. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Pete asked for prayers for his friend Margie and family as her brother joined the saints triumphant. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Barb lifts up prayers to the, for the end of gun, gun violence and we lost another life last night. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Yes, Rosemary lifts up prayers for justice for Brianna Taylor. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Nice to have a little bit of good news. May we lift up prayers of thanksgiving, O God, for the life of Randy Denda Martin, who celebrates her birthday today. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. So we also ask that we lift up prayers for Leslie and Stephen. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pete asked for prayers this fr for his surgery that is Friday that will alleviate the pain in his left hand and just prayers in general for all, all Pete is facing uh, today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Uh, Rebecca lifts up prayers that, uh, fo for her follow-up scans this week and, the, and for her friend who has surgery to remove skin cancer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sue lifts up prayers for Donna. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Beth lifts up prayers thanking God for the healing of her nephew, Jeff, who recovered from COVID and is at home. She's still praying still for her cousin, Debbie. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. He lifts up prayers for his father's mental state as he awaits the third scheduling of his much-needed surgery. He lifts up prayers to keep his father strong. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I'd like also to lift up uh, prayers uh, this day, prayers of thanksgiving for uh, Clara and Joseph Pantalone on their baptism day. I encourage everyone to, to, to send them a card. I'm happy to you know, provide their address if you don't have it already. They are such a wonderful family, and Amanda has been doing such an amazing job as one of our new Sunday school teachers. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I'd also like to lift up prayers as well for uh, Rachel, who is uh, mourning the l loss of her grandmother and is also at the same time navigating the, the, her grandfather being in hospice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
And I'd also uh, like to lift up just general prayers for our world, for all the anxiety we're facing, for our teachers, for our first responders and folks um, continuing to work to combat the coronavirus around the world. We also lift up prayers. Oh, this is a cool one. Prayers of thanksgiving for the safe return of Aaron from the Marine Corps. Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron, for all you do. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift up all these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abundant mercy. Amen. Friends, we will continue uh, with responding to God's call that we've heard through our prayers with the song, with, through the singing of Micah 6. Let's continue, dear friends, with the announcements. There is a lot happening right now at Messiah Lutheran Church. One? Okay. Oh, yes! The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. It's incredibly... Camera number two or peace looks like the same exact thing. <laughs> May God's peace be with you this day. May we all have a little bit of humor uh, in such complicated times. And I'm continuing on camera number one. Got it. One. Okay. Thank you. Rich is so awesome, by the way. Uh, so that, that's an announcement in and of itself. First other announcement. Children's Sunday School. Let me tell you, it's been a, a gift. Awesome to be working with a bunch of, frankly, brand new kids. Helping them learn about the Word of God. And it's always linking um, what we're talking about in worship, uh, is, it's always the same text in Sunday school. And so if you have someone, uh, a family friend, uh, you know, a loved one, who would like to participate sort of uh, pre-K to sixth grade, we are continuing um, uh, Children's Sunday School on Zoom at noon every Sunday after worship. Yeah, also here's the thing. Uh, and we, so uh, uh, Lutherans from a number of Lutheran congregations in the, in the area uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m. are gathering in Collins Park in Scotia for a Lutheran Youth Hangout. If you are interested if, or if you, if one of your young ones are interested, just let me know and I will make sure you have uh, Pastor Darren and Pastor Dan's phone numbers. Those are the pastors who are going to uh, be there uh, supporting uh, this opportunity to be together. And next, uh, we have our new member class. Here's the thing. It's not too late to join. We had, I don't know, like 20 people or so. Uh, in our last new member class, there's a couple more families who will be joining um, as well uh, who weren't able to take part last week. Um, but we're really only just getting started. This is a multi-week class. Um, if you haven't uh, per, uh, signed up already, uh, let me know. I've heard some uh, you know, the folks really appreciated it so far. We're still getting a couple more books because we ran out of new member books because there were just so many people. Um, but also, if you just want to like, learn a little bit about the basics of Lutheranism and connected people, you can join us as well. And the next, uh, the next session of that class will be today at 4 p.m. And we keep the learning going each and every single Sunday here at Messiah, because at 6 p.m. we have uh, our, col our Collaborate uh, Confirmation class, and we are going to be uh, just talking about, just giving kind of an overview of who Jesus was for our middle schoolers uh, this day. If you have any other middle schoolers that you know who like, might like to participate in this sort of thing, uh, we would love to have them. Just let me know. Those are really small texts, uh, really small letters. I don't know if you can see them very well. But here's the deal. I'm really, really excited about this. So um, when I was talking with a couple of my other uh, colleagues in ministry, other Lutheran pastors, um, way back in August when we were trying to say, hey, what's a positive that's coming out of all this COVID stuff? And we realized one of those things 
uh, is that we can sort of be together across distances and across congregations and, and all that. And so all three of us are offering three different Bible studies that are all starting this week. Uh, I don't remember exactly who's do doing which one uh, right now because I can't read it because it's still a small text, but that's my fault. Um, but, I, but, but I believe it's Pastor Dan is leading one on, the, on Ecclesiastes, which is going to be great. Uh, Pastor Darren is leading, from Good Shepherd is leading one on the Sermon on the Mount. And I am actually, uh, I just touched my mic, I am uh, this uh, Wednesday at 11 a.m., I believe, um, begin, beginning the first day of a class on the prophets of the Old Testament. And actually, Rabbi Matt Cutler will be joining us to give us kind of a Jewish perspective on the prophets of the Old Testament. And then we'll be taking it from there. We'll be doing sort of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and then probably focusing on Amos and Micah. Uh, for, for the kind of, so there'll be a weekly thing over the next five weeks. Another thing that's been a kind of a neat opportunity, um, right, there are so many, um, you know, minor feast days that we never really have a chance to talk about in normal times because everyone's so busy and all that. And so one thing, instead of kind of keep going back to the five days a week Vespers thing like we were doing this past spring, is that we are offering on all those feast days just a very brief reflection, a brief time of prayer um, at, at 6 p.m., the next one of those is the, is the Feast of Michael and All Angels uh, this Tuesday at 6 p.m. I'll be sort of talking about kind of what a Lutheran understanding of, of, of angels uh, and it might be. We don't really usually talk about that stuff that much, right? And uh, we'll talk about that and just relate it to understanding of some of the systems that we are navigating, just like Pastor Jonathan was talking about in his sermon. Next, we, we've had a bunch of great guests over the last two weeks as we've relaunched virtual uh, community meditation Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. I've had a great first couple of weeks training and leading meditation from, um, with mindfulness-based mindfulness stress reduction techniques from the University of Massachusetts. Um, and we'll be continuing those each and every single Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Our very own Russell as well as being trained in that technique as well, and he'll be covering some weeks that I'm not available. Yeah, so if you haven't watched it, uh, every single week uh, we are doing uploading, uh, me, me and Ibrahim are working on this, uh, every Friday at 6 as well, we're going to be airing a little brief kind of children's sermon using my old Star Wars toys from when I was a kid, and it's sort of a, uh, it's a preview of what we're talking about that following Sunday. Um, for whatever reason, I'm trying to finish my week every single week, and I'm trying to upload it, and it's always the last thing I do, but... The, 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 the lessons in and of themselves are well worth the pain of figuring out how to get the video to play on Facebook because it's, oh, it's just a fun way of getting a little taste of what we're going to be talking about uh, the following Sunday. Uh, we've already had three episodes of Star Wars The Bible Strikes Back. Uh, we want a brand new Star Nerds character, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the tough as nails uh, warrior woman uh, Atlantia, and she meets Luke Skywalker. We don't know what's going to happen. They're in search for the Bible on the, pro on the planet election area, and... Uh, Chewbacca um, somehow turns into a guy named Baca who sounds like this. And uh, Rich Becker has called me a nerd, um, <laughs> which is so, so, so true. Um, at least I'm not a Star Trek guy. Anyway, uh, sorry if I offended anyone. I probably do that all the time. Finally, adult ed. Each and every single Sunday at 8.45 a.m., we've had great conversations, um, just Relating uh, our faith, I start always with a Bible reflection, and then we turn, turn it over to Merle Longwood, who is talking about, um, you know, just various aspects of the anti-racism work. Um, and uh, it's been a really great conversation so far. We have folks phoning in from New Jersey. It's awesome. So I certainly uh, hope uh, you, you, know, could, you could join on in. There's a greetings posted ahead of time every single week. Ble uh, blessing of the animals is next. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Um, so this, so we are going to be doing, one way or the other, a blessing of the animals this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. I'm super, super, super excited about it. There's still some more details we need to work out. Uh, let me just give, uh, to make sure that we are completely in line with, uh, you know, what's, we're still in phase four of, uh, of, of New York State reopening guidelines. And we're going to make sure that uh, no matter, however we work it, that we're going to be staying completely within those safety guidelines for everyone. Um, but in all likelihood, this will be uh, an in-person offering. There's a few details we need to work out to make sure we can do that. Let me give you a brief overview of just some of the things that we will be doing. We will be uh, making sure that we have um, full uh, social distancing. 
We'll be asking members to um, move, go into the parish yard from the uh, kind of from the Gilderland Avenue uh, side of worship and then exit from pretty much any other direction. Um, just to make sure there's not cross flowing of traffic. We're going to be practicing social distancing. Everyone is invited to bring their own chairs. Uh, we are going to be having a safety team that will be making sure that everyone wears their masks. Um, that is Bill Ellis and Paul Bodie so far. I'm probably going to get, uh, Rich makes a very funny face, and I know, but uh, I was about to say I don't, I don't want to mess with Paul Bodie, but that's incredibly not true. I absolutely do. But we will have a safety team that will be making sure um, as folks come in that they are not exhibiting any symptoms and that sort of thing and making sure that they're following social distancing guidelines. Um, and we, there will be a limit, too. I still haven't gone out and paced in the circle like what six feet apart will look like. We, by New York State law, we'd be limited to 50 people. I think it's actually going to be a little bit less than that based on the size of our parish yard. That said, um, I think the plan will be the first however number of people, it's going to be somewhere between 30 and 50, um, uh, that, um, that, 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 can, that can arrive in person. Um, we'll do a blessing of the animal servants. It's about 15 minutes. And then folk, everyone else will be invited to wait in their cars if there's a second one. We never have had that many people anyway. But in case we do, we'll offer a second one right after. Um, and so I really do, we, we, we're just trying to have an opportunity for people to, number one, see each other uh, in person, but at a safe distance. Um, and number, before it gets too cold, number two, just to, um, to worship together in a way that is safe. Um, and so I just really appreciate um, all, that, all the work that is going into making sure we can do this in the safest way possible. If it rains, or if it, after a little more reflection, we decide we cannot um, run this event um, within New York State's guidelines, uh, we'll offer a drive-by blessing instead. But, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Blessing of the animals one way or the other, whether it's um, in our parish yard or as a drive-by sort of blessing, will happen this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. And we will be sending out de more details to the congregation once we finish, fi finish figuring out the exact detailed final plans uh, for what that will look like. Keeps going. Yeah, uh, Children's Forum on Racism. So we've been continuing to sort of have these monthly little um, like uh, b b book studies for young children. Um, and there's this great uh, book um, called Not My Idea and it about sort of talking about uh, white privilege um, uh, from a children's perspective. Um, it's a really fantastic read. Um, and so we'll read that and have a brief conversation for our young people about that. We, we have learned from sociological studies that we need to talk about anti-racism with children from a very young age, and there's age-appropriate ways for doing that. And that's coming up uh, in just a couple weeks' time. Finally, there's so much going on. This is one that's really exciting. So uh, the Reverend Kader Kalia, who uh, um, grew up in Palestine and is now a Lutheran pastor, in Brooklyn, um, and uh, Karen Brown, who is the director of the EL Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's Peace Not Walls program, is going to be joining me for a conversation about what is going on in the Holy Land and what it means to be a, a Palestinian Lutheran uh, and kind of how all those things interact. Um, there's actually five Lutheran churches in Palestine. Uh, the Lutheran Church runs the main cancer treatment facility for Palestinians, um, right near the Mount of Olives, actually. Augusta Victoria Hospital. And so it's just going to be an opportunity to learn how Lutherans are doing good work around the world and how you can be a part of uh, working towards a but just peace in the Holy Land. We need so many volunteers. Oh my goodness. From uh, more assistant uh, Sunday school teachers to uh, folks that we need, we need a couple more quotes for snowplowers for this winter, actually. Uh, if you, have, if you know, know folk, could recommend folks to us for that. Uh, to uh, folks to run various committees. Um, we, uh, we would very much uh, appreciate. If you have any extra time and would like to contribute to the ministries of Messiah Lutheran Church, let me know. And of course, we have new folks watching us all the time here at Messiah. Uh, if you'd uh, like to know more about our congregation and have any questions, just shoot me an email um, or give us a call and we will uh, follow up with you to uh, just let you know whatever we, answer whatever questions you might have. And finally, dear friends, uh, at this time, if you'd like to make an online gift using Tively or via mail, you are free to do so using the instructions on your screen.
us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts as your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And even when we cannot be physically together, we are one in Christ Jesus, united around a common table. Indeed, at this table, Jesus gathers us all together. The humble and the proud, the joyful and the grieving, the pious and the profane, those of strong faith and those who long only for faith. To everyone, without exception, come, siblings in faith, and join in spirit-filled community. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, O gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. May the Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life throughout the week ahead.
May God who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to cosmos, lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. God bless, friends, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.